Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glad to be in the house today. Glad to see everyone. Amen. Glad, most of all, that the Lord is here. Amen. Right? Thank you, Jesus, for your presence, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your peace, even right now up on baby David. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Salute to everyone online. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It's a beautiful, glorious day. We've been having a lot of storms and rain in Tucson, Arizona, but we need it. Amen. We need these floods of water, right? And I, we think of it in the spiritual. God is pouring out, right? His, his spirit is, 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 is likened to the river of, river of life, right? The waters that continuously give, like the woman at the well, drink of this water and you'll never thirst again. But how the desert's been receiving an, an abundance of rain recently, I'm just seeking the Lord. He's ministering to me on how he's moving here in, in the desert. Amen. And so today we got the sunshine shining. Amen. The sun has come out and, and we thank God. Amen. For the, his son that he gave us to redeem us out of sin. Amen. And so um, we'll get into the word what the Lord put on my heart to speak on today. Amen. But again, just giving uh, glory to Jesus. Amen. Praise God for everyone that tunes in online. Amen. From afar, um, I pray that the word blesses you. I pray that you have a hunger for truth and a desire for truth. Although that there's many ministries and churches that are operating in bigger capacities and in different ways, right? As, as Apostle Kip labored in the Holy Ghost last weekend, they're rolling the cart. They're covering more ground. They're maybe having more of an influence, right? Oh, they sure are. When you adapt the ways and the systems and things of this world and bring it into the church, it'll draw. Oh, it definitely will. But we don't want to draw with the devil's spirit. We want to draw with the Holy Ghost. See, when you have the Holy Ghost, it goes against man. It goes against the world. It goes against the flesh. So we don't adapt those things to roll the cart, to cover more ground, to baptize more people, to get bigger buildings, to get better church vans. That, that don't matter. What matters is Jesus and pleasing the Lord God. So we're going to walk this glory. We're going to walk this ark as the glory of God and the commandment even he gave to Moses to carry and bear the glory of God. Amen. Don't just roll it because it's easier. Well, it's a lot easier. Yeah, but when you get to that threshing floor like Apostle was preaching, right, your body will drop. You didn't handle God and his, his word and his glory the way that he instructed in his word. You thought a new way. You thought a different way, a different, this ministry is casting out devils. God must be with them. Mm. You better get in the word and know that you're with God and God is with you. If not, why, why do any of, in any of all of this? You might as well just go and be completely and live for yourself entirely, right? But glory to God that we walk this, 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 this ark. We're going to see him in glory. Amen. We're going to see the Lord in glory. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's open it up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for another day. We thank you for your grace and mercy waking us up yet again, Lord God. We thank you for being in this place right here, right now, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that our lives be acceptable and a holy sacrifice unto you as a living sacrifice, Lord God, and that we thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit, Lord Jesus. We bind everything of the devil's kingdom that would try to come and bring confusion or doubt or any type of discord, Lord God, online and here in the campus physically, in each and every campus, Lord God, as we're gathering together to feast on your word. Put your word in, in each and every manservant's mouth, Lord God, wisdom and understanding and even revelation, Lord Jesus, to be in the midst of your people, Lord God, to give us instruction, to bring us encouragement, Lord God, and to bring us, Lord God, into this bride that is yours, that is to be perfect and glorious, Lord God, because you are worthy, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we bless you and we thank you, Lord Jesus. Help us to be doers of the word and not just to be hearers. Lord God, help those, Lord God, that are hearers and not doers to become doers, Lord Jesus. Help those, Lord Jesus, even online, Lord God, that still have the tickling of the ear to circumcise the ear and quit playing with this life and the things of false doctrine and to come and abide in truth and holiness and the standard of God that they would be saved and not just go off on our own fairy tale or fable, Lord God, thinking that they're going to make it in when your word condemns a thing, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for truth, Lord God. Let this desire and the love for truth, which is a love for you, grow within us even the more, Lord God, and let us have you on our heart and our minds continuously, day in and day out, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for pulling us out of the miry clay. 
Lord God, we thank you for the renewing of the mind. Lord God, renew our hearts and minds even right now, Lord Jesus. Lord God, fill our cups up, Lord God, that they overflow, Lord Jesus. Lord God, and we thank you for that, Lord Jesus, and let us walk worthy before you. And we give you the glory, Lord God. We give you all the praise, all, all the honor, and all the glory, Lord God. We bless you this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. Glory to God. So yeah, this, this past little while, but really this past week, the Lord was uh, ministering to me and showing me um, on, this, on this topic, and it was coming through other men of God's mouth. It's all the same Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. And it all comes together, and we'll go into what the Lord put on me to speak on it today. Amen. But today's title is, You, right? The focus, thank you, Jesus. The focus is on us individually. So for me, Joshua Bumgarner, right? Me, my wife, Stephanie Bumgarner, on her. So individually, God is saying it's on you, right? So you got to break the cycle, right? Right? Yes, God is there. His grace, his power, his strength. We ain't overriding none of that. We can't do this without his grace and strength. I'll tell you that. That's true. But God also says it's on you. Right. Too many, too many false teachers and false prophets will prophesy to you that this, that, the other and the third, this, that, the other and the third. Your, your breakthrough is coming. You're 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 all this. You're all that. But yet they're neglecting to tell the sheep that they got to break the cycle. Right. They're saying, oh, God, God, it entirely, and they just keep going off in their own way, their own cycle, no break, no change. They're like, well, what happened? I sowed a seed. I did what they said. I, I've even been doing this and doing that, but did they break the cycle that God's saying you're in? It's on us, right? And so that's that tickling of the ear. That's that false prophecy uh, that many line up and pay X amount of dollars for, and, and the things don't come to pass, right? Because why? It's on us. So it's not on our pastor, although the pastor is to lead and guide and speak truth in the Holy Ghost, not to add to nor to take away from the word of God. It's not on the church assembly. It's not on the brethren or the sisters. And it's for surely not on God, right? We cannot blame God for the, the repetitive thing that we're dealing with, right? When we haven't done our work of breaking the cycle. But this is what happens, right? Right. Oh, well, pastor, so-and-so, you know, they haven't been doing their job is what I feel they should be. Or my brother and sister haven't been doing what they should be. And, 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 and you know, God, I don't feel his presence and his grace and his, his power to help me through this. Well, you can't blame anyone. It's on you, right? It's on you for the cycle to break. What cycle? Well, we're talking about cycles of addiction. We're talking about cycles of lust. We're talking about cycles of perversion. Cycles of things that God has an ought against that will bring us into hell. And God says, you got to break it. I'll meet you there. I'll be in the fire with you, but you're going to stand in flames. You're going to stand and feel the fire, right? God will preserve you and, and, and do what only God can do. But we have to enter into those flames. Shadrach, Misha, they walked into a furnace of flames. They weren't standing outside when Jesus met them. That's how people act in the spirit in, in, in today's life that, oh, I'm going to stand out here. I'm getting close to that. Lord, help me right here, right now. God's saying, you better go in those flames. I'm not going to stand out here. Why? Because God's glory is not going to be revealed through not standing in a fire. It's going to be revealed through standing in a fire. It's going to be revealed through persecution. It's going to be revealed through trials, temptations, right? All these things that happen to the believer walking in spirit or worshiping God in spirit and in truth. So we'll open up with Matthew chapter 10, verse 38 through 39. Again, the focus is it's on us, right? Individually, it's on you. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 38 through 39 says, And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. This is the Lord speaking, right? What did Jesus say? He said individually, he that taketh not his cross... We each have our own crosses that bear the crucifying of our souls with nails, as Apostle was preaching last, last week, right? That before really the, Jesus came and the truth of God came, we just eased and skated and just went through this life nonchalantly, right? Even coming to church, these false churches with false doctrine, nonchalantly, everything's all good, all good. Pastor, it's all love. Yep, Jesus is love. But then the nails come, boom, boom, boom. 
into your feet, pop, pop, pop. Now you feel stuck, right? To dying to yourself as the doctrine and, 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 and dying to your worldly ideas and habits and forms and lusts and all these ungodly appetites, God nails you to this cross. The, 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 the word of God nails you to die to yourself. Right, but people don't want to hear that. People don't want to feel that. People don't want these nails. They throw them down and they go back to the nonchalantly lukewarm Christianity. But Jesus says, if you don't take up your cross, and if you don't follow the Lord, right? If you don't die and break, if you don't die to yourself to break this cycle, this habit, right? This this addiction, this lust, whatever it is, you are not worthy of the Lord God. What does that mean? You're not going to enter into His gates. You ain't going to enter into his gates like you think you are. You're going to enter into a, a, a place of judgment that's going to be in condemnation. That he says, I never knew you, right? We got to know, us knowing God is one thing, but we got to make sure that he knows us, right? What did he say in Matthew, was at chapter 7? Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. So what's one thing that we say that we know God, and I pray that we do, that we know him for real, Bible, the spirit of God, not just what men say, what does he say? Second of all, does he know us? We can know him all day. That's what Matthew chapter 7 was saying. They knew him. They prophesied his name, did all those works. But Jesus, I don't even know you. We got to know that he knows us, right? Verse 39, he that findeth his life shall lose it. You want to hold on to the thing? You don't want the nails? You want to keep skating around in fables and, 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 and this, this easy walk with Jesus? It's out there. There's big numbers. There's big gatherings. The praise and worship will even be lit right? Glory to God, right? You can go and gather in these false churches, but if you want to hold on to your life and not abide in truth and sound doctrine, God says you're going to lose your life eternally. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it, right? This goes down to even the simplicity of modest apparel with women and coming out of pants and men not putting on dresses, this is what it comes down to. People don't want to deny themselves of these things and die to these things. They want to hold on to it, right? Imagine me being a transgender, coming to Jesus, still wanting to wear my dress and preaching the word. Brother, you're still holding on to your ex-life, right? Women coming with their pants and tight and high heels and saying that they're a pastor, but they're not a pastor. They're not Deborah, Rose's a mother. Don't twist this thing up. You're an error, you're in the wrong spirit, humble yourself, repent, and get in the order of God, or God will rebuke you for being an abomination, putting on those pants and acting like a man, and literally revealing your reproductive parts. This is what it means to lose your life for his name's sake, that you'll find eternal glory with him, right? This is what it comes down to. Well, I don't, you know, I don't do the obvious sins, but yeah, okay. These are the type of things that we talk about, right? But we have to look at ourselves as on us. We can't, again, blame anyone else when we stand before God. We have to purify ourselves. And yes, ultimately from the sin, what God's word comes against, we have to purify from. 1 John chapter 3, I'm going to go 3 through 9. Right, And every man, so every singular, right? Every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. This goes to, well, no one can walk like Jesus, no one can be, live a sinless life. Oh, yeah, you can. God commands it. <laughs> These are the nails. <laughs> this, is, this is the dying to yourself and bearing your cross. You don't want to do this? You ain't worthy of him. You want to not feel that? God says you will not gain that. Gain what? Gain eternal life. Jesus, the Son of God, went through that and gained eternal glory. He did it and despised the shame and went through the suffering, yes, for our sakes, but for the glory that was set before him. You got it. We got to get out of this mindset of this life. This life will drag you down to the pit of hell. Right? But even as he is pure... That means pure in a way that God says is perfect to love your neighbor, to bless those who curse you. I mean, to forgive everyone. This goes deeper than just putting on the adornment, right? And the head covering. This is holiness inside and outside. This is pure as, as our father, right? This is something that really 
is a is a is a is a is a is a looking into ourselves and making sure that we're examining ourselves, right? So whosoever committeth sin transgress transgresseth also the law. For the sin is the transgression transgression of the law. Right? So we're talking about breaking the cycle of sin. Right? You can you can keep going around. God's mercy will be as his mercy is, to whom it is, as he says it is. It varies for it, different people, but we have to see this thing and be like, you know what? I'm tired of this. I know God's against this. I can't keep doing this. Lord, this is truly on me, right? It's truly on me to break the cycle. Well, let's point something out. Fornication. Adultery. You're still married, but then talking and, 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 and lusting after other women and engaging in inappropriate ways, and you're still married. It's adultery, and it gets to the physical, and it's fornication. Two strikes. You're not married, and you're getting together with a man. You're getting together with a woman. You're exchanging inappropriate pictures. You're doing this, that, and other. Comes to the point of fornication, right? These things have to stop. And when you know it's not of the Lord, the scriptures condemn it. God even instructs the apostle for the church, the saints of God, to pull away from people that operate this way. They say they're Christian, they follow, they pay a tithe, all that. Yeah, well, you still got to pull away from them. So you got to see this cycle. Like, man, I, I got to stop doing this. It comes down to me. We can't blame God for not giving us the strength, all that. You know why? Because your strength is, your, the strength that you're seeking for from God only comes when you're crushed. It only comes when you're on the cross. Because look at Jesus. He says, Father, why have you forsaken me? That was the man crying out to the Spirit, Right? It feels like to that point when you're dying to that extremity and even like addiction or, or, or these things of, of fornication, you really love this woman or this man and you have to, it feels like you're dying to this thing. Lord, I didn't think you wanted this much of me. God says, oh yeah, I do. I want all of you because it's wicked and it's sinful and you need to be purified. And when you feel like you have the, no other breath of life in you to give, that's when God shows up. That's when he says, I'm here for you. This is the way I want you to come. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off. Let's keep going, right? Then you see God in a whole new way. You feel God in his presence in a new level. Like Paul said, I'll call it to the third heaven, right? You may have felt him in a first heaven in worship. You may have even seen him in a dream in, a second, uh, in the second heaven. But then when you come to this place of purifying yourself and breaking the cycle, God will bring you up to the third heaven, right? So, breaking the cycle of sin. Let's get back to the point of even coming together with a woman and a man. I'm hearing that I can't have my wife or my lady no more. Like, we're living together. All it has to stop. You got to get married. Right? It's not up. Just keep praying, praying for me, brother. Keep praying for me. I'm struggling. Like, yo, we slept again together last night. Well, you got to stop, bro. You got to stop, sister. Right? You have to stop the cycle. You have to stop doing the transgression and go make it right. God says to go get married. The marriage bed is, is undefiled, right? And is pure. That's the marriage bed. Stop the cycle. Quit going around saying, oh, God, God knows my heart. God knows this. I'm waiting for God's strength to give me the breakthrough. No, you got to do it. You're going to have to die to it then go get it right, right? In, the, in, that, in that context of that, that area. Right? Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Anyone that says they abide in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ abides in them, the scripture of the word of God says sinneth not. Yeah. Other places will say it's okay, you're saved by grace through faith, keep, you need to get it right, but it's okay, bro, he understands. No, it says he sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. When you really know the Lord Jesus... You're going to be grieved when you do a sin. You're going to feel a shame upon you when you feel a sin. You're going to have tears come to your eyes and say, Lord, I've sinned against you and you alone. Lord, help me. And he's going to come back to you and say, you need to stop. Yeah, but Lord, help me. He's going to say, yeah, you need to stop. And then when you stop, he will help you. He won't just come and pull you out and, and whoo, catch you up like Philip and hover you over to a different city. I moved you away from her. And now you guys can't, you know, do that no more. Now I want you to get her. No, you got to stop. Right. You. 
And then, and then you keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. You don't hear from God no more. Well, guess what? As Apostle was saying, and the Holy Ghost, have you not read? What do you keep seeking God for on the thing that you're keeping in a cycle from when it is written? You're running away from him because you're not seeking his word. Simple. You know when you get into the word, it's going to condemn and say, break, stop the cycle, but you don't want to hear it. No, I'm just seeking God. I'm seeking God. I'm seeking God. Well, he's right here. He's, he's right here. Him and his word don't vary. You going in your prayer closet, me going in my prayer closet, we shouldn't come to different conclusions or understandings of God and his word. He's right here. If we have different doctrines, theologies, beliefs, and systems, and oh, I don't think he'll send me to hell for wearing that. I don't think he'll send me to hell for sleeping with him. Oh, then there's a different understanding. You're hearing a different spirit in your closet. I'm hearing in the Holy Ghost, right? His word is going to confirm that. Who's in the Holy Ghost and who's hearing a seducing spirit? And it's not one's better than another. Let's get this in order. Let's hear the Holy Ghost. But his word is here for us, right? So whoever is in Jesus sinneth not. You got to break the cycle. You can't blame nobody. You can't blame no government. You can't blame no judge. You can't blame no ex from your past. You can't blame no abusive person from your past. You can't blame no one that did anything wrong unto you or you unto another. You got to break the cycle. Amen. There's no blame game with Jesus. Again to the garden, Adam pointed at Eve. Eve pointed at the devil. But yeah, you transgress. You have to take accountability, right? Thank you, Jesus. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him. It says sinneth. It doesn't say sin, right? A sin, you can still know God and sin. I was there. God kept dealing with me. Son, you got to get it together. You got to stop. I go make a decision again or light a cigarette again. Son, you got to stop to this thing. You got to stop doing these things. Well, what about the Nicorette little pop things? Yeah, but you got to stop the thing. You can keep trying to go to different sources. You got to stop. Lord, this, I'm feeling a witch out. Yeah, you got to stop this thing, right? He'll come to you and say, it's you. You got to stop, son, right? And so, but when the word of God says, whosoever sinneth, it's continual, right? Because you can know God in sin and you really know him and he know you. But what happens when you sin again, you'll be brought to tears and you feel a shame upon you. Right. And your heart should hurt that you sin against God, that he was nailed to the cross and bled for you in that thing. When someone cusses and uses a curse word, he died for that. When someone goes and looks at pornography or has an inappropriate exchange through text and conversation to the physical, whatever it is, he died for that thing. It should make you grieved in your heart that you're sinning against God. Mm -hmm. But when you sinneth and you keep doing it, right, right, this is when the scripture says you don't even know God because you keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know him and he's dealing with me. Bro, you don't know him. Sister, you don't know him then. You think that you know him, but you don't really know him. What do we mean by know him? Knowing God and his word means intimacy. Right. He, Adam, knew his wife. They became intimate. God says, I never knew you. They were never intimate. When you're intimate and you know and you love God, you're intimate with him. You, you know him. You feel his presence. You feel his love. And you ha your heart is after his. So when the sin comes, your heart hurts. Lord, I've sinned against you. Right? This is knowing God. You stop the sin. You don't sin eth. You may have sinned, stop it, repent, keep going. That's where God is. But if you keep doing the thing, you ain't breaking the cycle, and you say you know God, you really don't know him, right? That's where people get the relationship. You guys got religion, we got relationship. No, we got relationship, and this thing's a marriage. This thing's a bride and a groom, and this isn't a covenant. This is deeper than just a relationship. This is deep as marriage. This is deep as it gets over here. And God's word says it's a pure religion, undefiled unspotted from the world because the world is of the devil right thank you lord so little children let no man deceive you the scripture is saying the holy ghost is saying let no man deceive you let no youtube ministry let no person let no one and anyone i don't care who it is let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous because people will make pure religion look like you're a Pharisee, you're doing too much, you're legalistic. That righteousness was fulfilled on the cross. Yeah, but the scripture also says, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. Right? 
your faith unto God, as I believe it was Abram, was counted unto him as righteousness. Our faith unto Jesus and living as his word says is counted unto us as righteousness. Why? Because we're doing what his word says. And we're doing his righteousness. It's not about our own righteousness, right? We're not just living the way that we live and examining ourselves and doing what his word says inside and out because we think it's our own way, right? It's, it's God's word. It's his righteousness when we do it. Even as he is righteous, again, it's his righteousness. But let no man deceive you to think that you're doing too much, right? It don't take all of that. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. That's scripture. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning for this purpose, right? This is the reason why the Son of God was manifested. Right here, the scripture says that he might destroy the works of the devil. The sin was the problem. The sin is of the devil. But you can't blame the devil. You got to break the cycle. Right. And God will meet you there to, to devour these works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Amen. Right. Amen. If you're born again, water in Jesus name, baptism, hallelujah, and filled with the Holy Ghost, even seeking for the Holy Ghost. Right. You're born of water. Salvation's already come unto you. You keep living as the word of God says, it's a promise. He's going to fill you. You're going to speak with new tongues and you're going to be sealed with that spirit. Yes, it's a it's a given. But even after the born of water and of the spirit, you got to continue to endure. Right. And the word of God says, doth not commit sin. If you're committing sin, you ain't breaking your cycle. Right. For his seed remaineth in him. That's the word of God. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Right. The seed comes into the heart. If you're continuing to live in your cycle of sin, right? You can't do it because you know this is contrary to God and his word, right? But you say that you know him. Mm, scripture says different. Proverbs 15, 32. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. Man, that's deep. Man, this one scripture could be a whole word for one day, one week, one month, one year. This thing is deep. He that refuseth what instruction in the Holy Ghost, doctrine, the word of God, sound biblical teaching, right? Come up out of sin, come up out of worldliness, inside and out. Yep, everything that we normally always touch on because normally a lot of people come against it. Say you're legalistic, all that. Yeah, it don't take all that. Yeah, the word of God says it does, right? You want to despise that wisdom of godly counsel and instruction? The word of God says you despise your own soul. Again, it comes down to you, right? He, singular, refuseth instruction, despiseth his, singular, own soul. It always comes down to you. Yeah, but my wife don't want to hear it. I hear this. I know this is true, but my wife don't want to live like this. My husband don't want to live like this. What is it going to be like if I choose to serve God the way that he says to and my household doesn't want, don't matter. You got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You be a light in a shining in a dark place, shining true, true light, biblical Jesus, real Jesus. And lead by example, by walking as a, 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 a living epistle. Oh, man, it's going to be warfare. I don't know how it's going to work. They want to keep celebrating all these pagan holidays. They want to keep doing all this stuff that the, the church preaches against. No, it's the Holy Ghost preaching against it, condemning it. Yes. Well, how is that going to work? Brother, just stop. Just stop doing the things and just say, I'm going to live for God now, son. I'm going to live for God now, wife. Vice versa, the husband to the wife, wife to the husband. And watch God do a miracle in the mix of that. But it starts with you. Right. The word of God says you want to love your son, your brother, your mother, your sister, right? Your wife. You ain't worthy of Jesus. You want to put them before Jesus. You ain't worthy of Jesus. That's a that's another hard cut right there. This is the sword of the word of God to bring division. But again, again, though, it comes back to you got to break the cycle. Right. What, what is it going to take? You're going to have to you're going to have to get on your on your face more and cry out to God. You're going to have to know him more. That way your faith gets stronger in him. Lord, this truly is your will. I know you and you know me. This is, we're getting to this, this place now. I'm, I'm seeking you more and I, I'm in this, Lord. I'm going to pull away from these things. I know you now, Father. I know you now more that this really does grieve you. 
right? To esteem my day of birth and of the flesh and to esteem myself as Pharaoh did as a God in my own birthday where people gather on me, esteem me, lift up and blow count, like all that me, me, me worship that Satanists do. Lord, surely you never did that in the scriptures. The holy men of old time never did that in the scriptures. I got to seek for the old path. What's the good way? What's the holy way? What's the sound Bible way that the men of God, Jesus Christ himself operated and the apostles? I'm going to choose that. Mm, I feel it straight and it's narrow, but I'm going to do that. And I'm going to esteem a day that the Bible says we can esteem of the born again. This is the day I got baptized. This is the day I got filled with the Holy Ghost. What am I going to do on that day? Well, I'm going to truly give God glory. Instead of giving God glory on a birthday party, I give him glory for another year. Sounds right. You know, to the, to the carnal mind. But when you get in the Holy Ghost and you really know God and you get in this, in the spiritual realm, you see God's like, mm, I'm not with that. That's why I told you to be born again. Mm -hmm. Esteem this day and now give me glory in holiness this way. Oh, well, what is that going to be? Hallelujah. Yeah, we can still break bread and rejoice and, and, and have a, a party. A party is not of the devil as long as the devil's not in it. If the Holy Ghost is in it and it's a party where we're going to break bread and fellowship, right? That's what they did when the communion with breaking of the bread and the wine and of the body and communion of Christ at the Lord's Supper. That's what it was looking. But hey, don't be getting drunk. Don't be coming over here just to eat. Right? They were treating it like a party. Right? So there, there's an order in that. But yet we come together and it's in the Holy Ghost. There's no condemnation where there's no sin. There's no transgression. There's no condemnation. Let's get back to it. That. Come into this place of not wanting to hear the instruction. You despise your own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Yeah. Counsel of God comes. You hear it. You don't just turn your ear and say, all right, I ain't listening to that no more. But you stand there. You say, hmm, never heard this or seen this before. Let me not just go off and shrug against it and say, no, nah, I'm good. Let me get an understanding on this topic, right? Mm -hmm. Birthdays, Christmas, holidays, these things. Let me, you know, why does God really say this in his word? Why does Jeremiah chapter 10 preach against the tree? Yeah. And decorating it and all that. You know, let me look into this. This is where you get the instruction and you seek for the understanding. And when you really have the heart after God, he going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. It's going to come with some nails and you say, yep, cut it out. It's on you. Quit blaming your family. Quit blaming your husband. Quit blaming your wife. Quit blaming your daughters. You want to have them be the reason why? That shows your heart loves them more than me. You're not worthy of me. Right? But when you really want to seek him and you get this understanding, you'll make this change. Right? Again, it's singular. Right? So Galatians chapter 6, verse 4 through 5 declares this. But let every man prove his own work. Hey, it's as simple as this. People complicate things so much in the, Christ, in, 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 in the church. Thank you, Jesus. Overcomplicate. Oh, I don't feel convicted on that. I don't. Yeah, okay. Let every man prove his own work. Look at in the carnal and the worldly system. This even goes. You go before a judge. Did you do the sin or did you do the, the, the violation or not? Did you go before you go parole officer? Did you break the law and run away? Did you, did you go and rob this place or did you not? Right. It's your own. What did you do? In the workplace, not even having a crazy sin like that, are you working diligently? Are you doing your job or are you not? Oh, well, my coworker didn't pass me the shovel and that ain't going to count. I don't care what he all did. If they did wrong, I'll deal with them. But what did you do? Right. It goes even in this natural worldly life and the carnal coming down to your own work. How dare we think that we're going to neglect having our own work in the church and with our walk with Jesus? It's our own work. So let every man prove his own work. And then, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. Because why you're, you're proving your own work unto God. For every man shall bear his own burden. Thank you, Jesus. Every man shall bear his own burden in this life. We help one another out with, with burdens. Absolutely. That's Bible. But Bible also says, bear your own burden, that it not be so grievous unto others that you're weighing others down. Bear your own, we'll help each other as we go, right? L don't be a hypocrite, right? In breaking cycles, stopping sin and such things, right? 
to condemn one when you're doing something like if the Holy Ghost comes on you and say, mm, you're putting a judgment on someone. And if I put it back on you, you're in it too. Don't be a hypocrite. The hypocrites will all perish and go to the lake of fire. Matthew chapter seven, verses two through five. Talking about judging. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. Don't be a hypocrite. Getting such to the point of judging other saints of, oh, they did this, they did that. But yet it comes back unto you. And, and you're in error in some way. And God come and say, yep, you need to get it together as well. Right. That's it, it's, it's a very common thing. I mean, that even evil spirits will come up on you to be so righteous in your own. Eye. Oh, look, OK, you come to the understanding and the standard. But then you the spirits will try to make you look at others and, 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 and condemn others. But you better not be condemning if the scripture doesn't condemn it. Right. And also making sure you're examining yourself. Why behold this the mote that is in my brother's eye? Something small. Right. And you don't even consider it's the beam that is in my own eye. Or how about they'll say to that brother, let me pull out the little moat, right, that's in your eye. And behold, a beam is in thine eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. The good understanding with the scripture, thank you, Jesus, glory to God. God says, examine yourself, break your own cycle, because truly, when you're walking around with a beam in your own eye and you're judging others, you're not doing it in the right spirit. When you actually examine yourself and you feel that pain come up out of you, you have a grace and a, and a mercy of God, right? Because you've been there and you see. So when you see maybe a moat in another brother's eye, you ain't going to come with this wrong spirit to shed innocent blood or to shed blood, right? You're going to come with a with grace, you're going to come with an understanding. You're going to come with an uplifting along with an encouragement of Brother, you got to stop doing this, right? But when you walk around with a beam in your own eye, you're, you're, you're wanting to slander, you want to just judge, 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 judge all day long. And God says, you got something in your eye that you can't even see. But when you truly do that, you'll, you'll have the right spirit when you go to your brother with that moat in his eye, right? That's why he says, thou shalt see clearly how to deal with it, how to handle it, how to do it in the right spirit, and not just in your own way when you have that beam, right? And our belief, our hope, our trust, our faith is in him alone. Right? I've, I've, I've often been quoting this recently, or even in the van rides, um, but let's get to the scripture, right? So Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1. It's in Jesus alone, not worldly wisdom, not worldly counsel. Everything that we've adapted in this world before that may have worked to an extent somewhere in the carnal, we got to let that go even, Right? Isaiah 31 verse 1 says, Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. If you don't want to deal with breaking the cycle on your own and you want to go to worldly counsel, woe unto you. Worldly help, woe unto you. Right? You want worldly help it's showing that your your faith is in jesus alone to see you through this thing of breaking the cycle everyone's faith is going to be tested there ain't no way around this all right again you can't blame anyone else if you aren't breaking the cycle it's all on us and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong but they look not unto the holy one of israel Neither seek the Lord. Why again? Because they know when they go to seek the Lord and break in that cycle, it's going to come with a dying and a suffering with nails. And they don't want to hear it, right? The flesh don't want to hear this word, but nevertheless, let the flesh die, the spirit and the soul rejoice. Amen? But when you seek the Holy One of Israel and you seek the Lord, He's going to give you a strength and a grace and a, and, a, and, a, and a power that only he can give. Yeah, the world has horses and chariots and a system that can do something for your, your body, this life now, to a, an extent. But the power, the anointing and breaking strongholds and fighting in the spiritual, all that that's going to really take for real, for real change is only in Jesus, only in God. But it's going to come with nails. Glory to God. Jeremiah 17, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. 
Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Even going, instead of in, 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 in gaining godly instruction and wisdom and going to another pastor, another evangelist, another ministry, another church around the corner, another this, another that. No, quit going to man and go to God. When you find a man of God that's following, like Paul said, after Christ, as Christ walks, purifying himself, not sinning and abiding and holiness, right, and doing what God, then you follow that, in, that example because that man is truly following Christ and he can gain wisdom and understanding and God uses pastors, absolutely. You have to have a pastor and leadership submit to for they watch for your own soul. But instead of what I'm saying, going to other men, other men, other church, other wisdom, other counsel, other instruction, right? Other, what is it? Um, oh man, what is it? Uh, worldly uh, therapy, all these things. There's a curse that comes upon you if you're putting your trust in man that much. God says, cursed be the man that trusteth the man and maketh that flesh his arm. Why? Because the scripture says right here, his heart departeth from the Lord. Your heart's going to be tested, but don't depart. Seek his face and walk in his ways. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land and not inhabited. You're going to be desolate. You ain't going to get the breakthrough. You're going to still be running around in circles like Israel was, right? You're still going to be chasing your own tail. Right? Because you're not trusting your heart's being tested and it's not fully trusting God. Right? But blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. That's the Holy Ghost. He and, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the, in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Even when there's drought coming, even when there may be something coming, we be rich in the Holy Ghost, we're not going to run out of thirst. Right? This is why it's another part that's so good of, of fasting. You crucify this flesh and you gain your source of, of hope and strength in the Holy Ghost. Right? This is your roots going out by the river, the Holy Ghost, and you're still going to yield fruit even when there's a time of famine. We're in a famine right now for the truth of the word of God, but yet we're still building and yielding fruit in the Holy Ghost because our trust is being tested in the Lord. Are we still going to believe that? Are we still going to walk this way? Are we still going to endure and hold on to what the scripture says that much to that degree? Are you really? Yes, sir. Glory to God. My hope is in Jesus and him alone. I can't depart and make another doctrine, another form of the gospel. I can't go and just set the ark on a cart and roll it back. Because it seems better. It's the new way of doing it. Everyone's following. We were reaching 5,000 followers a week because we shifted some things around and put on a cart. Man, be far from us, right? Glory to God. The heart is deceitful. Verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it but God? You think that you know God to the degree, but you're varying away from his word. Your heart is deceiving. You have my heart showing me that this is the way. But then the scripture comes. That ain't the way. Just submit to it that you were in wrong. You were deceived and your heart deceived you and come into the word. It's simple, but you got to have humility. You got to humble yourself, right? Instead of being arrogant and proud and just going to a different church. Mm. They believe in what I felt like in my heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to adapt to this church. When you know it's not right, when you know God's saying your heart's deceiving you, stop doing that. I'm trying to do this to gain you and your soul from going to hell because it's not for you. Right? So the heart is deceitful above all things. That's very serious for us as seeking God and living for Jesus and wanting to be saved. We can't go on our own thoughts, our own emotions. We always have to be governed by the Lord and his word. Verse 10 says, I, the Lord, search the heart, right? So he's going to show us, he's going to search, he's going to show us what flaws in our character, what things we're still holding on to. 
He's going to show us even when we're not bridling our tongue the way we should, if we're engaging in inappropriate conversations at the workplace, if we're putting things before our eyes and our, and our eyes are liking it and we're staying on it, God's going to show you and say, you need to stop, right? It's you. You need to stop. Jesus says, I try the reins, meaning God's going to say, stop doing it and yield. Whoa, 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 slow you down. And he's going to try your heart. Are you going to listen and you're going to stop? Or are you going to say, mm, no, I'm good, Lord. I got this. Pastor preaches it very well that I can keep doing this. I'm going to go. Even to give every man according to his ways. Again, this is singular. God's going to give to every one of us according to our own ways and according to the fruit of his doings. How and what you're doing is going to yield some type of fruit, good fruit or bad fruit. And whatever we're yielding, God's going to judge us by that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 through 11. And there ain't no escape in this. There's no escaping judgment. The devil, all these fallen angels, right? Everything is going to be judged. And that is a, is, is a terrible day, the scripture says. It's, 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 it's a horrible day, right? People think that, ooh, it's a glorious day. You kidding me? Go read the Bible and see what that day is going to look like. Fruit in the womb, young children, sucklings, and infants going to be destroyed if they don't have the seal of God upon their forehead. How do you get the seal? Well, that's a good question. How do children get saved? Are they just born from, oh, God knows my child. He wouldn't send my child to hell. It's not just a child, it's a soul. Well, how does my, my child get saved? Well, read the scripture. How do we get saved? How does anyone get saved? Whether you're black, white, Hebrew, Chinese, African, it don't matter. How do we get saved? Born again. Of, what? of water and of the spirit. Right? Not in our own ways, not in our own philosophy. In my prayer closet, no, God said he wouldn't do that to people. Where did you hear that? Who showed you? Is it varying from the word? Are you going to trust in that? Your heart's deceiving you. Come back to what the word of God says. And you're going to see a warfare like you've never seen. You thought you were in warfare and false doctrine? Come to truth and sound biblical teaching. Watch that devil rise up in ways you've never seen to test you in that word. But God be glorified that you're still standing because it's by his grace. Why? Because you're making not man the trust of in flesh. You're making God your hope. You're making God your trust. You will only be standing in truth and righteousness in this straight and narrow way by the grace of God. I'm only standing by the grace of God. My house is only standing by the grace of God. We are only standing by the grace of God. And it's because we're submitting ourselves unto him. He's keeping us. We shall be in desert places and parched places, but yet we're still yielding fruit. Right? We're still living and abiding as God says. Hallelujah. Right? It may not be as expedient as them that are rolling the cart. But when we get to that place on the day of the Lord, glory to God, we're going to hear, well done. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one, singular him, may receive the things done in his body. Right. Every, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad, whether you're choosing to not break your cycle or whether you're choosing to break it, you're going to be judged on it. Whether you're choosing to live holy and abide in God's word or you're not, you're going to be judged by it. There's no escaping this. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. The terror of the Lord is how we come up out of sin. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and his wisdom, right? Therefore, we gain instruction and we get understanding. But by the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences, right? This is why we walk in the standard that God ordained us to. Because he is very serious about holiness. He is holy. The Old Testament again, again, and again, and elaborates that even as the, um, the men that would get the sickness, right? Um, leprosy. Leprosy, you go back in the Testament, you get into this, it's, it's another place, right, that could be broken down more on a teaching. It's considered as sin in the spirit, right? If the person comes in and they have the sin, right, and then it gets a type of healing with the color and the hair is how the scripture goes back then and it goes into all that, right? 
Basically, if the person comes in, they have sin and they stop, they break the cycle, there'll be, a, there'll be a healing from God, but he'll say, you know, even to put them out for seven days until it heals and then let them come back into the camp, right? Or if the person doesn't want to stop sinning, they don't want to break their cycle and that leprosy, mm, that wound's still open, it's not healing, it's actually growing and it's doing this, don't bring them into the camp because it's going to spread. That's the same thing with the sin. But if you break that cycle, God will heal that wound and forgive that transgression. You come and you continue to abide with the people of of God, right? This is gaining understanding from old time of old ways and looking for that path, not going off on some other way, right? This is the terror of the Lord, right? Romans chapter 6, right? Very familiar passages for most of us, uh, 1 through 7, and then I'll drop down to verse 23, right? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Right? Individually, shall I continue in sin that God's grace would abound? No. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Right? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, right? Not three titles. That very well matters how you baptize. We were baptized into Jesus Christ, right? Into his death. We're baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That old man dies. There's no more sin. There's no more cycle. It tries to rise up, die to that thing again, right? That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. This doesn't sound like the cycle keeps coming. It sounds like the cycle gets broken off and is buried, right? It doesn't sound like the cycle keeps coming about that grave and I'm kicking it with my cycle. Nope. I got to deal with it. All things become new, right? Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We should not serve sin. As a servant, right? In another place, the scripture talks about yielding your members of righteousness to unrighteousness. We're not supposed to be doing that. Right? We're not supposed to be yielding and serving sin no more. Verse 7 says, For he that is dead is freed from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're freed from sin. We were in bondage to those things. But you feel that struggle, that cycle still coming with you, even out of baptism, even out of receiving the Holy Ghost, wherever you're at, you still have that cycle that you know God says, I'm going to send you to hell for this, and you still got it. You have to make that choice. You're going to suffer through it. There's a suffering that comes with this walk. The scriptures declare time and time again, I believe it's 1 Peter 4, 1, right? That we also should suffer for, for Christ's name's sake. You're going to suffer. Jesus even says, you're going to suffer for my name's sake, right? You're going to. If Jesus suffered, we are not going to escape it, right? He says in another place too, if they did this to a green tree, how much more a dry tree, right? Meaning God manifests in the flesh. They made him suffer in the flesh. He, or he suffered in the flesh. How much more us we're going to? But this is the beautiful part here, that this is the terror of the Lord, that we persuade men to repent and come up out of it. For the wages of sin is death. Don't let your heart deceive you that, oh, on that day of great judgment and of terror of the Lord, that God will excuse me because I just kept repenting and saying prayers every single time, but I didn't break the cycle. You stand before God in your cycle of sin and you ain't breaking it, Right? God's going to judge you for your fruit of your doing. He's going to judge the fruit on your tree. And he's not going to, you're not going to be able to blame anyone else. Pastor, prophet, sister, brother, ministry team, counselor, none of that. Not at the, even the Egyptian council of the world. You ain't knowing you alone are going to stand before a holy and righteous God. And he says the wages of sin is death. You will die and get a fitted body, a body fitted for eternal damnation. The worm will continually to eat on you. It'll heal again and eat again, heal again and eat again. You'll continually to be beaten and stripped. All these things, it'll heal and it'll get pain. It'll heal and it'll get pain. Time and time again for a thousand years is as one day. If you start to fathom this terror and you get this in your mind and seal it in your conscience, you say, I'm breaking this cycle today. I'm breaking this thing right now. In my mind, I'm breaking it. First of all, I'm breaking it off in my heart. And I'm going to suffer through this in my flesh. And I'm going to see God in a place where I'm not going to go to that with the devil and the black and hell. Hallelujah. I'm going to go with Jesus in glory. 
The pain will be wiped away. There'll be no memory of the things of this earth. This is such a peace we can't even fathom. We can't even fathom the pain and we can't fathom what's to come in glory. Why are we halt between two opinions of holding on to what we think is right in our own eyes and what some other false prophet is preaching and evangelizing because it sounds good and it's tickling my ear. My Lord Jesus, if we only know and we get into the scriptures and we really know Jesus, we will feel this thing in the Holy Ghost and say, this ain't no joke. I'm struggling for men with putting on a dress. God's really going to send me to hell for that? Yes, it's an abomination. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. If you want to go around that, New Testament ain't like that. You want to play that game and you want to hear that? They got churches filled with this thing now, men in dresses. Oh, God's going to send a woman to, wear, uh, to hell for wearing pants? It seems harsh, doesn't it? It seems a little too much, doesn't it? Go to the scripture and see it's an abomination unto God. Right, that that woman is putting on to something that which pertaineth unto a man. That God says an abomination. It is an abomination. You want to justify it in your own heart? You want to justify it in your own means? Well, I still feel the Holy Ghost was good. Feel the Holy Ghost and know the Holy Ghost. And God says, come up out of it. Be ye separate. Be peculiar, zealous of good works, thus saith the Lord. Zealous of these good works. Hallelujah. God's really going to send me to hell if I don't get baptized some formula in some way? Yes, Bible says you're going to go to hell because you didn't put on his name, you weren't buried with Christ, and you ain't going to rise with Christ. Why well, even have the Holy Ghost? Well, good, you got baptized even with the baptism of John. You didn't get baptized correctly. However it is, you got the Holy Ghost. You still ain't got Jesus' name. You don't got the blood applied. You going to go to hell for that? Yes, the Bible says. If I start to go off on my own feelings, my own heart, I'll be deceived swiftly. I'll be preaching all these other false gospels out here that sound so good and it sounds so right. Even casting out devils. But God on this great day will say, you didn't obey my word. Oh, but, 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 but he said we didn't, but you didn't obey my word. Oh, but they preach such a good word, Lord, I felt the Holy Ghost, but you didn't obey my word. We can go and choose this and choose that. You see people get judged with heavy sentences in the courtroom. Some, people, some men are silent. Some men will start to get terror. Oh, I don't want to go to prison. I don't want to go to jail. What do I got to do? I didn't do all that. It stops now. Boom, the hammer gets dropped. You're done. Sentencing, take him away. And they'll still be doing this all the way until they get shot and throw him into the court in the van. Just talking, talk, all that talk ain't going to hold up for nothing. Did you obey the law of the land? Did you obey the word of God? Did you obey what God said? Right? Oh, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. I'm, so it's, it's like the same thing with the, the dressing, right? Well, homeless man that doesn't have no food. He doesn't have this and have that, right? I've been to the place where I, had to, I was still for my meals. Anything I want to see, I had to go take it. So, but, but judge, I'm hungry. I don't, yeah, but you should be working. You shouldn't be on drugs. You shouldn't be living a criminal lifestyle. You shouldn't be out there having that lifestyle to force you to steal to eat. You are going to now get judged and you are going to go to jail and you're going to get on probation. You're going to go and you're going to need to get cleaned up. You got to break your cycle, right? So even if we have this, this, this thing in our heart that seems right, well, I should be justified to do this thing, judge. We can't bring that to Jesus on this great day. Well, I feel justified to do this, judge, right? God's going to say, but I told you, I told you better. I told you and I strived with you. Well, I didn't think you were really meant all that, God. I didn't really think you meant, I have to stop doing this. Are you serious? He's going to say, did not my word tell you? Right? Don't I esteem my word higher than my name of Jesus? My word is higher because it's me. The name that I revealed through the Son, yes, you've gotten, you've put on. Hallelujah. But don't you know there's a new name that's going to come? <laughs> there's a new name in Revelation. He says he's going to be revealed unto the saints. So just to say, Jesus, just to say you're Christian, you're not abiding with his word. He esteems higher than his name. It is a very scary place. This is the sobering and then the terror and the fear of the Lord that we have to come into. Right? The tickling of the ears don't want to hear none of this. But if you don't receive instruction and in godly wisdom, you despise your own soul. Bible says. Right? So the wages of sin is death, right? I want to really stick on that because that seems to be a big thing. I thought the same thing. Lord, would you really send a woman to hell for wearing pants? This is where it starts to get a little tight, right? Speaking of these things, even online, it starts to get a little tight. Lord, do you really mean what you say in your word? Well, let me see. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. I've been saying it nonstop, right? I've been quoting it, but let me read it verbatim. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. 
The woman shall not wear which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. This is spiritually, yes, and this is physically a garment, yes. Don't try to say, well, I'm not acting like a man, but I'm going to dress like one and, and I'm good. That's just spiritual. It doesn't mean the garment. No, it means actually both, right? For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Well, that's saints. That's worldly people. That's uh, Luciferians. I mean, what do you, what do you, don't matter. All. All means all. Everyone that abides this way to the gay pride convention that goes on downtown, to the homosexuals going into the elementary school to teach kids to be flamboyant and put on a dress and telling little kids that they're cats and they're squirrels and they're dogs and they're roof roof, all that. It don't matter who you are, whether you obey the gospel or you don't, you will be judged on this great day and stand before the judgment seat of Christ and saints, right? So when we lean on our own understanding, right, we'll, we'll come to a place. We'll come to a place, 1 Timothy uh, 2, 9. We'll come to a place... We'll say, oh, no, that doesn't mean what it's... No, that, that does God, you're not going to send me to hell for that because that's your own understanding. This is when you really got to know God. Lord, are you, are you really serious in what you say in this word? And don't go off on your own way with one scripture. Let every word by established by two or three witnesses, meaning two or three scriptures, four or five scriptures, build up this doctrine in the Holy Ghost. Right, this is something that I've, I've labored on several times. Anyone, you could go down Modest Apparel, down on the Facebook page on Arizona, right in the discipleship in the in the OCOJ app. It's it's in there. If you need the recording, we can gladly send it to you. There's a whole teaching that comes with this. First Timothy two nine. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, right? Modest apparel with the Greek word apparel being kata stole with a kata and stole two words breaking down in the Greek long and flowing a long flowing garment right this is what a woman should adorn themselves in not the things of the world and goodly apparel and all this and that God wants the inner woman to have a meek and quiet spirit first of all second of all he wants the outside adornment to represent what's on the inside this is being clean on the inside of the cup and the outside of the cup right not just being like a Pharisee a Pharisee's false because he has the outside looking good the inside's full of wickedness and of dead man's bones not even keeping the judgment that he lays upon the people being a hypocrite, right? So let's not go too far in saying you're a Pharisee, right? With shamefacedness and sobriety, meaning I'm covering up myself. I'm not revealing my cross. I'm not revealing my butt cheeks hanging out for men to lust after. And I know my husband loves it, but honey, that only happens in the place that is in the bed. That's not for the man in the world. That's not even for the woman in the world because this thing goes all over this place and the whole world these days. So God says, I want you to cover that up, have shamefacedness, meaning I'm not revealing my breasts. I'm not revealing my, re my reproductive parts no more. I did in the world. I loved it and I got glory from it. Yes, but God says I got to have these nails come and hold this flesh down, put it aside, die to these things, be holy and peculiar, and have shamefacedness if something starts to reveal. Right? Wins and sobriety. Being sober, watching our tongue, how we talk, meek and quiet spirit. Men, this goes for men absolutely too. Not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, right? But which becometh woman professing godliness with good works. Verse 10, with good works, right? Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Well, wait, I thought she's a pro uh, apostle so-and-so with an anointing in a book that you could buy. Nope. Let woman learn in silence with all subjection. Verse 12, but I suffer not a woman to teach. That means I'm not putting up with a woman teaching or preaching or prophets. Hold on. They can prophesy, there's prophetesses, but as far as teaching and instructing the word of God and doctrine, they are not to be a pastor. They are not an apostle. Hallelujah. They're not Bishop uh, Evangeline, right? That's not in the scripture. We're not suffering, he says, but I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the Man, but to be in silence, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. This is the spiritual, and it comes to the carnal. Right, let me get another witness here. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Thank you, Lord. Does it really, do you really mean this, Lord? First Peter, let's say three, four. 
Right. I'm going to first Peter chapter three. Uh, I'm going to start verse one. Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands, your own husband. You're to be in, to be in subjection more than another pastor, another leader, another friend, another teacher in the world at school. Husbands first, and you are to subject to that man more than any other man on this earth, right? That if any obey not the word, that they also may be one without the word, be one by their conversation of the wives, right? While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning with the plating of the hair, the wearing of the gold, and putting on of apparel, right? This is what the world does. Let me clean up my outside that it doesn't look like I'm broken on the inside, right? But when all that makeup gets taken off and you got to take a shower and wake up with the man the next day, he's going to see you in your original form. That is what God says, I've made you in my image. It's beautiful the way I made you. You don't need all that stuff that's fake and hiding what's going on on the inside anyways. God wants to get on the inside and heal you and purify you and raise you up to be a meek and quiet spirit submitting to your husband and that your outward adorning not be focused on that no more, but on the inside. That and the price is, is, is of great price unto the Lord. But let it be the hidden man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, right? Because the outward makeup and all these things is corruptible. The gold is going to perish. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great price. For after this manner, right? This is the old path we seek for. Lord, show us the path, Lord Jesus. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy woman, yeah, that was back in Bible time. That's Deuteronomy. That's the law. That's, that's been the book of Acts. That's in 1 Corinthians. That's in Peter. That's the epistle. That's the old church. We don't have to abide that way no more. We're rolling this ark and we're covering way more land. We got, uh, we got Bishop so-and-so, right? We got all these women and they have an anointing and it's in the holy. Mm, you better see that that spirit is Jezebel. That spirit is not with the meek and quiet. That spirit is not submitting to her husband. Even if the husband pulls her up and he's a pastor to pull up my wife and to say now she's a pastor I ordained her and pour oil on her that's going against bible you better check the spirit that you're listening and it's not the holy ghost if you believe that right because this is the old time the holy woman also who trusted in god adorned themselves in being subjection to their own husband this is an adornment that's greater than just your outward appearance right even as sarah obeyed abraham calling him lord that's what the lowercase l, obviously not God, not calling him God, but this gravity, this subjection, this reverence for her husband. Ephesians chapter five talks about the man is supposed to love their woman as Christ loved the church. And the woman is supposed to reverence her husband as, as the Lord, as God, as submitting, right? It's man loving the woman and the woman respecting the man. This is the healthy balance that God created to have, right? Whose daughters ye are, right? This is daughters of Sarah in the church. This is daughters of Sarah. As long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement, right? And it continues to go on. So this, this adorning, right? This adorning, God talks about in the old time. God talks about in the Holy Ghost in the new time. When you get into this and you gain understanding, you say, wait, so modest apparel, long flowing and, and every time that preachers was referred to in the Bible in the Old Testament, and it was always to a man going to war to cover up his legs and not to show his nakedness. And you start to see, okay, but if brother, uh, brother Bumgarner puts on a dress, you know, something is terribly wrong. We're approaching a day where it's going to be justified, right? I go to places now, men are dressing like women. I'm like, this ain't comfortable. This ain't right. I don't care how you shove it in my face. This ain't normal. But when we've been living in witchcraft in the world from since back, I forgot the time in the study. As you look into the secular history, this was modest apparel was in the world normalized. Women wore dresses, men wore the pants and went to work. There was this order. It got thrown around, I think, the 1940s and 1950s, somewhere where, where it became a bigger deal. Women put on pants, went to work, usurped authority, and men just put up with it. Men didn't put on dresses, but the woman put on the pants. Now we're in generation after generation after generation seeing how this is normalized. I think it was even Adolf Hitler that says, if you repeat a lie enough, they'll believe it to be truth. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what Egypt did. Egypt and the devil repeated a lie to us generation, generation that we believe it to be true. Now when the truth, actually the real truth, the Holy Ghost comes and preaches truth, it comes against what we thought was truth, which is a false truth. It was a lie. 
So now we say, okay, we justify a woman wearing pants, but we don't accept the man. That balance is wrong. That balance is unjust. That balance is condemnable, right? To, 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 to condemn the just and, and, and to justify the wicked, both are an abomination. So if you're going to condemn a man for wearing a dress, but you justify a woman for wearing pants, that's an unjust balance. You're condemning, you're condemning, you're, you're justifying the wicked actually on both of those parts. That's justifying the wicked, right? But see, well, hold on. So wait, would he really send me to hell? Would he really send me to hell, right? That, that the Lord says in his word in Revelations that the abominable, the fearful, the whoremonger, the idolater, the sorcerer, right? The evil worker, they will all burn up. Everyone that is a liar, you tell a lie, a joking lie, a worldly lie, a jesting lie, because you're joking around. God says a lie is a lie. These nails come and tighten you up real quick and say, hold up. Lord, this is not your spirit that I'm speaking by. This is of the spirit of, of the world that I've been so used to. I repent, Lord, help me. Right? But yeah, so the Lord says the abomination that guys put on a woman's dress yeah, is still the same now. If you lay with a beast, man or woman, it's an abomination to God back in the law still to now. Right? You lay with these things that God says in the Bible. What's an abomination then that God says is still an abomination that never cleared up? If you can't show me in the Bible that God now justifies, that he says, you know what? I died on the cross. I forgive him for that. It's not an abomination to me no more. Man, you can wear a dress. Woman, you can wear pants. Show me that in the Bible. We'll have a, we'll have a different outcome. You can't show me that in the Bible. It's going on your own interpretation. It's going on your own prayer closet time. You don't feel condemned. You don't feel, you don't feel convicted by it. I'll tell you what, you better get to know God. Because if I say I know him, but in works I deny him, then I'm a liar. Right? The Bible says in works I'm denying him. If I can go and put on a dress, no one knows about it, I should still be feeling way terribly wrong. Right? Not even have to come in public. Just go put on, like, this thing don't feel right. And God will say, this ain't right. You better stop it. Right? This is the same thing with the women. But this is where we say this is the truth. Right? But this is so beautiful because this is what the word of God says. Right? In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times... Some shall depart from the faith. From the faith of what? Yeah, from God alone, but from the faith of sound doctrine, of biblical teaching. We see this now in a major way. We're here in Tucson, Arizona with a few saints, glory to God. But that few that are holding on to the faith of the word of God and saying, Lord, I'm not going to lean on more. I'm going to do what you say, Lord God. I may not even fully understand or really truthfully in the heart agree with it, right? Because the heart still wants to deceive you. So 1 Timothy 4, verse 1, that was. That some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. A seducing spirit is going to work up something that is not of God and say it's okay to do. It seduces you to the appetite of your own lust and your own flesh. Giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Yes, it goes on to forbidding to uh, marry and commanding to abstain from meat. So, yeah, but in the context of this chapter, it's not just saying for the woman's pants and what you're saying there, Pastor. What it's saying is they're trying to bring back the law, and that's what you're trying to do with Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. And you can't go to tell us that we can't eat meat when God says all is healthy to eat. Well, we're having to just balance with the word of God. We ain't saying that you have to abstain from meats because that would be something that is bringing you into a form of, 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 of the Old Testament, all that God did away with and said, all meat and all things are created to give glory unto God and to eat, right? But you got to eat in faith. If you can't eat that rat cooked from underneath my house in faith, don't eat it, right? It's going to condemn you in your, in, your, in your conscience. Don't do it then. Hallelujah. But if my brother and my sister can go eat that rat that I cook up with some garlic salt, you cannot condemn him. Yes, yeah, so we got the balance right in the whole context of this scripture. But God says in the word that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits in the manner of the doctrine of the modest apparel. People are giving heed to seducing spirits and after their own lusts. Where are we at with that? Thank you, Jesus. It's right here. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Is that 1 Timothy? No, it's right here. 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts. 
If a man don't want to change out of that woman's garment, he has a lust of being a homosexual and being effeminate, effeminate and the abominable are going to the lake of fire. Scripture condemns that. He has that lust to look like a woman still and don't want to change out of that garment. Yes, God will send the hell. Well, he's been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't matter. God is faithful to his word. God is a loving, merciful God. Yes, but on that great day of the judgment, he's still standing in a dress. He didn't want to take God for his word. He wants to keep living in that lust. He liked when other homosexuals kept looking at him in a dress. He liked when even straight men started to turn gay and look at him in that dress. God's going to condemn him and go to send him to hell. Well, what about the woman? That same balance that we have for the man that we know is right. It comes to the wall. But God, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. But, but daughter, I called you to be a daughter of Sarah, a daughter of Zion, a daughter of Holy a dollar of a meek and quiet spirit to submit unto God and unto man as my word says and not to go and reveal yourself that way to have shame facedness not to reveal your breasts hanging out or even having your butt cheeks hanging out with those tight little pants walking through Costco and every man's gawking and gazing and there your husband is dealing with these other men right and you wonder why your man is looking at other women the same way because that spirit of lust is in your marriage that spirit of lust is in your home well why does my husband keep looking at other women we go out to shop and we do this and do that because there's a lust still there in that man, yeah, there's still a lust in that woman that needs to be crucified with Christ. And when the holiness and sound doctrine comes, that's when that spirit gets binded for real. Now you start to see the renewing of the mind, the purging of the heart, the purging of oneself, even the outer adornment of the garment. Now watch that man be sober-minded. Now watch that man not be giving and looking at after woman's buttocks and all these things, right? And now watch that woman not struggling looking at that man with his tank top and or with, with a muscle t-shirt, right? Oh, he's so big and attractive. My man has a beer belly, right? My man don't work out, but that man has a six pack. Ooh, that lust needs to be crucified. God will judge you for entertaining the spirit of lust. Oh, I don't think it takes all that. Will you say that to the Lord and watch him condemn you straight to hell? You want to take, don't take my word for it because this ain't my word. This is the scripture in the Bible that we declare to have it being the truth of the word of God, right? Because it says right here, right? Thank you, Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. What does that mean? Pastor, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Yes, Genesis 1, 1. Yes, Revelation chapter 3, verse 28. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's profitable for what? For this teaching that you're saying to me. This teaching of miles to peril. This teaching of holiness. This teaching of the old past. Search for the old path of the old woman of old time. Search and they were in holiness. Because why? They are bold in what God accepted. They abided in what he approved. They didn't just go off on their own understanding like these witches in rebellion did. Hallelujah. Amen. All scripture is given by God profitable for doctrine, for reproof. That means it's going to come and correct you. It's going to rebuke you. It's going to come and say your, your way is wrong. Here's some nails and die to that thing. You still want to give heed to that seducing spirit? You will be judged for correction. Oh, I don't want to be corrected. Well, the word of God just told us earlier, you don't want to be corrected. You don't want to be instructed. You despise your own soul. That's pretty sharp and that's a two-edged sword. If you don't fear the Lord God and you don't hear that scripture come and pierce you, then you got something wrong. You got something see deceitful in your heart and God says it's your heart and it's desperately wicked and you think you're going to keep going on your own way, justifying your own abomination. The one who lays with the dog or lays with the snake and is laying in that bed will die and go to hell. You dressing like a woman or dressing like a man and acting like a woman and acting like a man, God will judge you the same way as that person. That pedophile will go to hell, yes, but still so will you. Glory to God. For correction, for instruction in righteousness. Remember, the scripture says, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. Oh no, you guys are just Pharisees and, and scribes and hypocrites and teachers of the law. You don't want instruction. You don't want reproof. You don't want sound biblical teaching. You despise your own soul. Right? He that doeth righteousness is righteous. Not to wave your own flag, but to give God glory. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. James chapter 2 will tell you, you better go and have your works met with your faith. You say you know him, but in works you deny him, you don't know him, honey. You don't know him in this intimate relationship like you say, oh, I got relationship, you got religion. Oh, well, then you still ain't got a good relationship because you don't know your God. You're supposed to be a bride and you're supposed to be married and you're going to have a wedding day. It's more than a relationship, honey. This is a sacrifice. This is a life. My God, you think about the natural marriage God uses to resemble this to us by? It's a sacrifice to be married. You think it's just a honeymoon and just a, I get to lay in bed with someone? It's deeper than that. You die to yourself. You esteem that person higher than yourself and you serve that person. For Christ not to be came, didn't come to be served. He came to serve others. 
Hallelujah. You got to serve in the relationship. It's a dying to yourself. So if you think the relationship that you have and not serving Christ, as he says, you ain't in no marriage. Your relationship is faulty and that thing is going to the pit of hell. Hallelujah. This also shows when we don't want to let go of these things, the lust that's still there and this, this, this connection with the world that God says, you're a friend of this world. You're an enemy to me. God says to come up out of that unrighteousness and change your garments and purify yourself inside and out, right? We're not going to swallow the camel and strain at the net, right? Uh, coming and condemning a sister. Oh, you're wearing pants. You're going to hell. And we ain't trying to work with her. We ain't trying to labor with her. We ain't trying to show her that she needs to get things and, and heal her and let the Holy Ghost work on her and the anointing come upon her. We ain't trying to do that. Then we would be as a scribe and a Pharisee and be hypocrites. Yes. Because that would be swallowing the camel, right? Hallelujah. Which is something on the inside that needs healed and, and needs deliverance. And then we strain out the gnat because she's wearing pants. That would be all wrong. Get this thing into order and balance and don't fight the sound biblical teaching that the Holy Ghost preaches, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Let me pull up. This wasn't even the word today, but Lord knows. Whoever needs to hear this, for us who know the word, let this, let this strengthen us in our faith of why we live the way we live. Why do we wake up day in, day out, do what we do? Why do the men of God keep preaching and standing on the word the way that they do? Because God says this is what is commanded of us. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yes, or, yeah, we're going to get there. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, I'm, I'm going to speak on it right now. This is the old path that we got to search for, right? Jeremiah chapter 6, this is where we were in this last week's message theme for the week for the men of God to get on the altar each day and to pray and to exhort as the Holy Ghost would give. Jeremiah chapter 6, I'm going to start at 15, down to 16. No, I'll just keep going down. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? What did Deuteronomy chapter 20 verse 5 say? It's an abomination to God to dress like that. To act like that and to dress like that. Inside and out, it's an abomination. So were they ashamed that they had committed an abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. That means people that say they know God in the house of God, they don't even blush at this. I ain't ashamed. I'll wear my pants. I'll put on my makeup. The man will put on a dress. I got this. That's pride. That's ego. That's rebellion. That's stubbornness. Full of iniquity and idolatry. That relationship is corrupt, right? Nay, they were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore, they shall fall among them that fall. When they get to that threshing floor, rolling that car, they're going to fall. And those that held the glory and kept the commandment of the Lord and the instruction of the Lord and holiness and righteousness will walk over their dead bodies and see God in glory. Right? For that I, I'm sorry, they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Right? This is for us. Even unto them. It's for all of us. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord was showing me this on the altar the other night. He had me in here exhorting that when you're standing in the way of truth and righteousness and holiness, straight and narrow the path and few be that find it, God will give you vision to see. Well, they're going left. They're going right. They're not wanting to hear all this Bible, Lord, don't matter. They don't have the vision. They don't see in the spiritual. Oh, they prophesy. Yeah, they're prophesying by veil. They're prophesying falsely. That prophecy ain't even coming to pass. Yeah, but they're doing many wonderful works. Yeah, but I'm going to judge them and send them to hell. When you stand in this straight and narrow way, God gives you and takes you to the third heaven. You see things that you've never seen before. God gives you understanding and instruction that profiteth your soul to gain eternal life. Lord, I see why you said something simple of changing a garment. This thing is way deeper. But they rebel. They don't receive instruction. They despise. You're not giving them the vision. But they think, oh, I have the vision. Y'all are wrong. Error, 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 error. Left and right, left and right. But when you stand in this path and see and ask for the old paths, you're in the law. Yeah, we're asking for the old path. What did they do? How did the saints act? How did they dress? How, what, and what was accepted unto God? We're not in Leviticus 10 with Nadab and Abihu, right? That, that had a strange fire, 
The commandment was they were to get the fire from the altar, place in the censer, and, the, and, and do as God instructed. They took some other form, how they got the fire. It wasn't the way God instructed. Something as simple as that, God struck them dead, right? Leaders, the, the, the pastor's sons, the, 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 these men that were even up on the wall. So you can't just have a pastor saying that what he says and the anointing be upon him. God can use him as he wants to use, but if he gets in an error, you got to come up out of that. He stays in that error, you don't follow that man, right? Ask, where is the good way? Seek for the old paths. And what does he say? Walk therein. Jeremiah 6, 16. Walk therein. I don't care what new way. I don't care what 2025 brings. I don't care what new coronavirus brings. But what the beautiful thing with coronavirus exposed was the false teachers, the false prophets, and all these things. Yes, but it exposed people flock to holiness in that time. Right, OCOJ was filled. Glory to God. It's, it's, it's grown now by the grace of God. More campuses, more lead. Hallelujah. God has brought back tenfold already, right? And we'll continue to. But it showed as people came out of COVID, they came to holiness and true because they what? They feared the Lord. The fear of the Lord got more intense, but now everything got lax, everything got cool, everything got comfortable. Ah, I'm going back to false doctrine. Right? You don't see all them people that were once with us no more because things lightened up. But why something worse come up on the line? Ooh, wait, God, God said I got to do what? Okay, here it is, Lord. Why don't we have that same heart and mentality now as we must? So stand and look, right? Ask for the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. Find rest for your soul now, but eternally, right? When you do what he says. This is the part though. But they said, all the other mixed multitudes, but they said, we will not walk therein. They don't take all that. He ain't going to send me to hell for this. He ain't going to do that. You don't know God. You say you know him, but you don't know him. You don't have the fear of him, even if you do. And even if you're not, you can come to the Bible and you read this. God has to give you the understanding. The understanding that comes for God will not contradict itself through scripture and scripture. It will always line up and make sense in the Holy Ghost and be truth. You think you can just come to the Bible and gain understanding and know God on your own? You're already coming to approaching God the wrong way. You're not wanting to submit. You're just wanting to see him. And God says, well, if you're just looking at me in that eyes, I'm not going to reveal who I am unto you and make known my way. You got to really want to know me, right? You got to really want to love me. You got to want to be married to me. This is deeper than what you think, right? And this is when you say, well, okay, Lord, Father, how am I to walk? What's the old path? And I got to walk therein. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also, I set watchmen over you saying, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. This is what God is still saying, right? Hearken until the sound of the trumpet. Cry aloud and spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgressions. Stop wearing dresses, man, and stop wearing pants, woman. Stop dressing and acting like the world. Get the world out your mentality and how you act and how you think, right? When the, when the songs come on in the world, don't start to get into that spirit no more. Rebuke that thing. Pray, Lord, cover my ear gates and let me sing songs and hymns unto you my heart even at the workplace right let this thing be true hallelujah show the people their transgressions hearken to the sound of the trumpet but they said we will not hearken what does hearken mean listen we ain't gonna listen why because the sun the the time for the time will come where they will not endure sound doctrine right so they will not hearken therefore hear ye nations and know O congregation what is among them Right here, O earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words. Again, what you feel convicted by, what you hear preached by another pastor, another people, don't matter who it is, what anointing they don't had on them of a truth, and they started to error, that don't matter. If it varies away from what they have not hearkened unto my words, Bible, black and white, nor to my law, but rejected it. You don't follow that, right? But this is where the Lord will show me this. Jeremiah 6 verse 10 says this. To whom shall I speak and give warning? Because it's not the man you're subjecting yourself to fully. It's the spirit in him, right? The Holy Ghost. God gives this warning. That they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised. Their ear is uncircumcised. What does circumcision even reveal? Even also cutting off sin? Yes. Pleasure right? Having the pleasures of this life, they want more instead of getting that cut off. They still want to entertain the spirit of 
whatever it is, to just their own ways, their own life, right? I feel more comfortable when I adorn myself this way compared to putting on a dress. I feel different in a dress. Well, good. You're supposed to feel different in a dress. You're supposed to be spiritual and a daughter of Sarah and not a daughter of the devil no more of the world. You're supposed to be completely renewed and transformed inside and out, right? So you're supposed to feel a little bit different at first, but then God bless you and God give you the understanding and you feel power in that dress. You understand why you have a head covering on. God says there's power upon your head and for the man not to cover his head when he prays and prophesies right these aren't just little things these are bigger things right but they don't have circumcised ears they're uncircumcised and they cannot hearken why because that 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 desire that lust is still there it's blocking behold the word of the lord is unto them a reproach they have no delight in it they don't want to hear it they don't want to hear all that they'd rather get their psalms They'd rather get a little instruction about not smoking weed no more, not getting addicted to cocaine no more. They want that. Yeah, they want all that. They want the blessing, the increase. They don't want all this, though. We have no delight in that. They don't take all of that, they say. Okay. Well, don't rebel against godly counsel and don't rebel and gain godly, or what? And don't rebel against godly counsel and gain worldly counsel. That's a great error. And it's greatly in the church of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1. Right. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me. Right. That take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit. This, all, this is not even the word today. This is all in the Lord. That covering that you have on your body, men in dresses, women in pants, these things, right? It's not of God's spirit. What spirit did you learn? Who did you learn that from? Did you learn that from Maybelline? Did you learn that from Gucci and Prada? Did you learn that from the mall? Did you learn that from your school when you were three years old or, or in third grade? Did you, did you learn that from fitting in and being cool? Did you learn that? Who did you learn that from? Because the spirit of the devil is the God of this world with the lowercase g. So that's not of God's spirit. Your covering of the outside is not of the spirit of the Holy Ghost. That's why God says, be peculiar of these good works, right? That they may add sin to sin. Right? Now, verse 7 through 13, Isaiah 30, 7 through 13, and then verse 18. For the Egyptians shall help in vain. Right? The, the world will give you some counsel and some guidance to an extent, but it's vanity. It may seem like it, but it's a band-aid. It may help. It may bring some understanding. Not at all. Not of the Lord. But it's in vain. And to no purpose. Therefore, I have cried concerning this. Their strength is still, it, I'm sorry, is to sit still. Now go, right it before them in a table and note it in a book that it may be for the time to come forever and ever that this a rebellious people lying children children that will not hear the law of the lord which say to the seers see not who is the seers the prophets the prophets were seers they could see things in the old time they prophesied by the holy ghost by the spirit of god and it was it was it was god through it. it was it was real it was the vision of god instructing showing what's going to come to pass and it would come to pass it was real right it was god but they say to the seers see not don't prophesy all that don't tell me all that don't 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 tell me all what's going to come. There ain't no flood. There ain't no judgment coming up on me. I'm a child of the Most High God. But you're rebellious and you're stiff-necked and you're uncircumcised in here. That judgment's actually coming up on you if you don't repent and get it right. Right? And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Don't tell us how to drink. Don't tell us how to act. Don't tell us I got to come up out of this. Don't tell me I got to quit even smoking cigarettes. No, don't tell me I got to be holy. Don't tell me I got to do all that. Y'all on the law too much. You need to come to this New Testament full of grace and truth where I get to have this grace as a doormat. But then Romans 6 says, you're going to keep doing that. God forbid the wages of your sin is going to be death to you. Man, woman, child, officer, no matter what, right? The soul will perish. 
So don't tell us no right things. Speak to unto us smooth things. This is how even the uh, Monday Monday nights with Elder Joseph and Apostle Kip, this is all in the Holy Ghost. They're just coming this last week. Just God is crying out, right? To us, yes, to keep us in check and keep a sober mind on the straight path. And to those, whoever this word is for today online, right? This is what they're saying. Don't speak that. Don't tell us that. Speak unto us, us smooth things. These nails are rough, jagged, and they're full of pain. They're full of, they're full of things that people judge me by, and they speak and ridicule me, and then they slander me, and they, they, they call me doing too much, and legal, they call me holier than thou. They, 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 the world looks at me, my friends, my family don't, don't, don't accept me like this. This is doing too much. Speak unto us smooth things. I'm saved. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm saved and prophesied. I'm going to be blessed to be a blessing. I'm a, I'm a blessing and receiving and believe it. The scripture says, and I'm going to go ahead and gain. I'm going to be raptured up out of here. And I don't got to do none of that and all that. You are not knowing God. You are not wanting to seek him to the extent that he says. Why? Because it cuts out of your TV time. It takes out of your, your marriage time. It takes out of your children time. It takes out of your own personal time. It takes out of your own going and doing your own thing time, right? Because you got to seek God more and get this biblical teaching and this understanding more that you may know him in relationship, know him more in marriage unto him, right? No, 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 don't, don't take all that. Just speak unto me smooth things, pastor. Prophesy deceits. Tell me things I'm going to be blessed and prosper even as my soul prospers, Jeremiah 29, 11. It don't take all that. Just tell me the songs, the hymns, the, the things that I want to hear. Smooth things. I don't want no nails. Verse 11, get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. This is what they may not say with their mouth. They're doing it with their heart and their actions. I ain't saying all that. I ain't telling God to get away from me. I love the Lord. Your actions speak louder than your words. God says you honor me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. The way that you come to OCOJ and you hear the whole, you hear the Lord speak to you and tell you to come to holiness and you turn away from it and you don't listen no more. You maybe come back every three months and hear another. You keep showing that your heart is not sincere to loving God. Well, I didn't know it took all that. I thought it was all good with Jesus and I didn't think my house would turn against me and all. I didn't think persecution was going to rise. Yeah, persecution is going to rise up now. Your own life, your own walk, we're to rejoice in it. See, this is where the warfare gets thick. This is when you start to see the fight against the truth come even more. Be like, whoa, mm -hmm. the devil ain't going to fight against something that's false. The devil going to fight against something that's true. Because spirit of false is devil, spirit of truth is Jesus. It's war, right? Wherefore, verse 12, wherefore, uh, Zeth, wherefore, this is the Lord, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. You you trust, you, you despise the counsel and sound biblical teaching. You despise this. You trust in what? In oppression, in perverseness, perverting the right ways of God, perverting righteousness, perverting what God says is an abomination, but you're making it right. You're perverting it. Right? And you're staying on that path. You're not, you can come up out of it and repent and get out of it. God, this is what God's cry is to. Hearken unto him. But you want to stay there on. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. You want to see what he says also in Proverbs chapter 1 about this? The Lord is speaking to us today. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2, real quick. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. Putting on those pants, putting up, me putting on a sombrero and going in prayer, covering up my head when God says that dishonors him. These things that think people is too much, right? I can make that way and it's always going to be clean in my, my own eyes. Me not getting married to Stephanie and just staying laying in bed and having children can be clean in my own eyes and justified all the way I want to. I can do it every which way and make a good, good excuse for it why i think it's right because the bible says this is true that every way of a man is clean in his own eyes but the but the lord weigheth the spirits right every one verse five proverbs 16 5 everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the lord my lord this is really on today's topic of, of really of, of even now of, of the of the dressing 
What is gay pride? Homosexuality. What is homosexuality? Perverseness. What is perverseness? Against God's order. What is God's order? God's law. Yeah, we're back in Old Testament. Yeah, we're back before the law, back in Genesis, in the very beginning of creation. God's law, God's order stands now and forever before time and after time until we make it into the eternal realm. It stays the same. He's the Holy One of Israel, the only one true living God, right? So, the proud in heart is abomination. This is why Lucifer got casted out. He started to become prideful and he was perfect in all of his ways until iniquity was found in him, his heart. This is a heart issue. This is the camel, the inside. Why don't you want to change for the Lord? Why don't you want to give this thing up? Why do you like the attention of wearing little shorts when you go out in public when you're supposed to be covered with a dress? Why do you like having such on little tiny t-shirts and whatever it is, men, right? Why, man, why do you like being having a dress on and acting like a woman and putting on makeup, right? Because you're proud in heart. And everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination. Proud in heart means you ain't going to change for the word of God. You're proud. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. You can join to another false pastor if you want to. It doesn't matter. You're going to go punished, right? This is back to individual. You can hold on to your wife's hands and she can justify you being against God's way, that's going to be severed and you're going to be punished. The, I think it's in Isaiah 13 that says everyone that's joined hand in hand with them will be damned as well. You want to hold hands with the world? You want to hold hands with people in false ways? You want to join hand in hand? You're going to be punished. God says make a clear separation, right? Come out from among them and be ye separate. Touch not the unclean thing, thus saith the Lord, right? Yeah. This is the beautiful part. When you come to God in his way and you walk in this way, Proverbs 16, 7 says, when a man's ways please the Lord, that means we have to prove what is that good and acceptable will and then we do it. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. The word of God is true and I can testify to this. Even enemies to be at peace with you. Glory to God. Right? Thank you, Jesus. But getting back to Yes, Proverbs chapter 1, because where we were at right here was, Therefore the iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, right? Whose breaking shall cometh suddenly and at an instant, right? Thank you, Lord, that the time will come, right? When wisdom, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in chief places, of concourse in the openings of the gates in the city. She uttereth her words, right? How long ye simple ones will love simplicity and scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. My people perish for a lack of knowledge. You can know that you say that you love God and you know God and you're saved, but you lack knowledge of what his word teaches, right? And you love the simplicity. But he says, turn you at my reproof and behold, I'll pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. See, this is when you come to that path and you stand in it, then you can see. He says, I will make known unto you my words. Why I said this, why I declare it Old Testament, New Testament, why this is in my heart. He'll reveal it to you. But Right? Because, uh, verse 24, because I have called and you refused, I have stretched forth out my hand and no man regarded. Doing too much, Lord. Don't take all that. You reject the counsel of God. But ye have set at not all my counsel. See? God says, but ye have set not at all my counsel. No, Lord, I'm not, I'm, I'm married now. I'm not drugging no more. I'm not thugging no more. I'm not, I'm not robbing. I'm not cussing no more. I'm doing all these things. Yeah, but God says, at all my counsel. So a man can be like that still wearing that dress. <laughs> man can still be like that still treating his woman like a dog. Man can still be doing like that and not honoring and loving his wife, right? So we have to have all the counsel. Verse 26 is what I was getting to. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. This is that breach because of the sin. You keep playing with God, thinking, he ain't, and thinking that he's playing with you. <clears throat> Get to this place. God will laugh at you in that calamity. And you'll be like, whoa, I didn't know that's you, Jesus. You're mocking me. You're, I'm, cr I'm crying out to you. Lord, help me. And he'll say, Lord, help me. He mocked. What do you think this scripture means? It means what it is. Lord, help me. I didn't know that you really meant that. He'll say, I didn't know I really meant that. He'll mock you. Do we, do we understand? When I really gained this, when Pastor Kip was preaching this one time, 
The Lord through him, he was showing me, this is real. This is what the Bible says. This is what God is revealing to us, that he ain't playing. And we thought that we knew God till we come to even Proverbs 126. And we hear it, and it's verbatim what it says and what I'm portraying. Like that. Be like, whoa, that, that ain't Jesus that I've always been told my whole life. Well, we got to get these things in order. Verse 18 of where I was at. Thank you, Lord. Verse 18 from Isaiah 30, verse 18. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait, on, wait for him. Right? Come to the straight and narrow path, walk in it. God gives you insight and vision and see and wait upon him. Wait upon him for understanding. Wait upon him for increase. Wait upon him for a breakthrough. And today's beginning of the message was break your own cycle. Yeah, you're still in this fire. You don't feel God's power yet. Wait on him. He's, 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 he's testing, right? He, he's, he's seeing what's in your heart. He says, I, the Lord, search the hearts and I try the reins. Are you just going to buck and kick every time a flame turns up? If so, you ain't going to make it to the kingdom of heaven. If every time you go through a trial and you go through a warfare, you can't break your own cycle, you ain't going to make it in the kingdom. It's simple as that. I, I love how even Elder Joseph was saying this. If you always have to hold on to a pastor's hand, a, a brother's sister's hand, and always get through the, the next day or the next week, you ain't going to make it into the kingdom of God. It sounds harsh and it sounds, it sounds too much, but it's true. We have to find in our own selves to break our own cycle, to rely on God and within our own hearts and our own minds that when this thing gets worse for the church and times go and we embed it into our children, we and our children can stand in generations after them. What happens? You go in isolation. You get locked up in a federal prison. No one writing you. Ain't no one talking to you. You ain't even got a Bible. What are you going to do then? Right? You got to trust in the Lord. You're going to have to know and have his word hidden in your heart that you don't sin against him while you're in there, right? You don't start doing perverse things to your body. You don't start masturbating. You don't start cursing. You don't start thinking of visions of women and, and men in your, like, you know, you keep it in order. Men come to try and slay you. You don't fight back, right? So this is, this is when it gets real. You have to have your own walk serious with the Lord, that you're sold out for him, right? And you wait upon him. Psalms 25, verse 4 through 5, talking about the old ways, talking about the old paths, Psalms 25, verse 4 through 5. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. This is a humble spirit. This is as a wife should be submitting to her husband, as the marriage, as God represents, the bride, us, the church, to him, submitting unto him. Lord, show me thy ways. O Lord, teach me thy paths. Why do you say this in your word? And, and why is it like this, Lord? I didn't think that you really meant it that way. Are you serious on this? Are you going to send all the abominable go to hell? Yeah, his word says it. I don't have chapter and verses in Revelations, right? Glory to God. That you see the word of God coming and contradicting your cycle of rebellion? It's up to you to stop it. Oh, I just need to get into a church that has such a strong anointing it can break this thing off of me. <laughs> No, you're going to have to suffer and do it. You're going to have to stop it. God's already brought the truth. Send the pastor with his anointing and his spirit in him. God's there. He's, me, he's wanting to meet you there, but you have to choose it. Verse 5, lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Well, God still hasn't shown me. God still hasn't convicted me. Yeah, well, you're going to have to wait. Patience, right? Patience is the fruit of the Holy Ghost. You're going to have to have patience. Understanding with even the doctrine of holiness and modesty, I have a test to that my wife didn't really come right to it, right? Like we got some of it kind of clicked in the beginning, glory to God, when we first were hearing it, okay. But like deeper, you know, more heavier things that like that God opened up my understanding even with the head covering, it didn't come until months later. But were we in rebellion in those months and it came? No, we were in obedience and subjection. And then the blessing came. I'm like, Lord, I read 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm like, I, I see it now in a whole nother way. And it wasn't in my rebellion. He showed me that it was in my obedience. He showed me that. So now it's locked in. I don't care who you send to say, don't take that to cover your head, woman. You can put on a hat, man, and pray. You are of the devil because you're speaking a lie. And that lie is of the father of, uh, of your father, which is the devil. 
right? He's already conquered sin, yes. He's already left us, right, the instruction and in giving us His grace. He's, he's made it all away. We are without an excuse. You have to make up in your own mind to do it. I had to make up in my own mind, even as I was just thinking of this in my, with talking with my wife, with my addiction. Uh, I had to make up in my own mind, I'm done with this, right? I had a crazy good encounter with God, demons, all this stuff going on. Yeah, the power of God, all that. But I still had to make up within my own self. When I wasn't feeling that incredible sense of power and I'm at my, my sister's house and I'm starting to feel a little bit. I didn't, it was the easiest withdrawal ever, but I still felt a withdrawal. I still went through a suffering, right? And I still had to make up within my mind, I'm sticking this thing out. And I started to do things new on a different sermon, 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 worship, sermon, prayer, so day in, day out, day in, day, week after week. How long? I don't know. I'm going to be patient on the Lord. All I really know, I had a, a beautiful encounter. God would minister to me and speak to me. Yeah, but I had to be patient and wait on the Lord till that thing finally broke. That, snap, that cycle finally snapped, right? And so much the things I used to call, that I used to get high with, I called a wedding ring. I told my sister, sis, take me to the gas station. I'm going to throw away my, my wedding ring. I, I, was a, I was married to that spirit of addiction. I love that spirit of addiction. It was a deep lust because it provided a temporary, a temporary outlet for my pain, right? But God came so good and dealt with that pain, healed the inner man, renewed and did what he only could do. But through patience, making my own mind up, when the, when the suffering came, when the thought comes to just go back to homie's house, to go back and get another strip of Suboxone, to go back over here and get another 30 or 20 of dope, to go over here and start taking some, maybe some Percocets, it's not as bad as getting high like that. None, I had to cast it down, cast it down, cast it down, ain't doing it, ain't doing it, ain't doing it, ain't doing it. All the way to the point of smashing my old phone with multiple numbers so I won't even think about going back to dope. Oh, you don't have to get high, at least you can go back to making more money than you ever made. I'm smashing that phone. I'm not going to make that an option. I'm throwing it away in the name of Jesus. Had to make up in my own mind. My sister couldn't do it. My brother-in-law couldn't do it. God gave me the mind and the vision and insight that he has more for me. But even God still put it on me. You have to make the decision, son. As simple as that. Right? God gives us the free will. Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. We're almost out of here. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Amen. Even posting this, I think, on my, my personal Facebook page of, of uh, Pastor Kip on this, on this, on this uh, passage of Scripture. Don't matter what name it is. Crack, fentanyl, heroin, lust, uh, homosexuality, right? What do you want to call it? Gambling, uh, drinking, alcohol. It don't matter, right? God's given him a name. That name of, of Jesus is above every name, Amen. above every devil, above Satan, above the dragon, above that old serpent, above Lucifer. All oh, he's above every name. So when you call upon the name of the Lord and you have pay, you have faith and patience in Jesus, you keep calling upon that name. It's above every spirit. It's above every form of a distraction. It's above everything that comes to try to tempt you to get off of the old path. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Right? Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but much, but, sorry, but now much more in my absence. The apostle even saying, right, that. Don't just act right and get it together, put on a dress when the men of God come around that are walking in God's ways. Much more in the men of God's absence, much more in even the church gatherings absence in your individual, your life. You should be more in obedience to God's word, even sincerely devoted from between you and God, because this is a marriage, right? Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Glory to God. I'm going to jump to, as, as I have, Ephesians 5 now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ephesians 5, to start at verse 1. If I bless us, the fruit is healthy and was strong and... 
Thank you, Jesus. Yes, the, the God gives us the fruit of the land, some to be to eat and have, right? We want to cut out unhealthy food out of our diets and eat more healthy. Yes. Right. Okay, so Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself us an offering and a sacrifice to God as a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication, right? This is breaking the cycle. Back to breaking the cycle, the original words today. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it be not once named among you as becometh saints. Well, I'm still struggling. I'm still going through it. I don't feel convicted. I don't feel the glory. I don't feel the prayer. I got to get to church and I got to live at the church because I'm only at the churches when I feel like I can make it and all this and that. You got to make up within your mind. You're going to suffer for Jesus or not. You're going to die for Jesus or not. You're going to live for God or not. If you ain't at that place and you're relying on others, you are not going to make it. Right. Because when that cycle continues to come, the word of God will says, says it shouldn't even be named once among you. What does that mean? The cycle stopped. The cycle ended. There's no more rep rep uh, repetition of this uh, habitual sinning. Right. It stopped. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks but giving of thanks for this, ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, right? For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The children of disobedience say, stop talking to me. Uh, all this, all this Bible. Stop showing me the straight no path. Don't see. Don't prophesy. Tell me smooth words, right? Children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the world. Walk as children of light. That's not your own light. This is the light of Christ, and what He says goes. This is truly His light, right? But the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You have to prove to me what he accepts. If you come to me and prove to me he accepts your sacrifice of dressing the way you want to and acting the way you want to and doing all that, your proving of your sacrifice is false because the judgment of God will come back and prove to you that it's false and prove to you what he accepts. Right? I myself have to bring myself as a living sacrifice to the Lord. What do you accept? I could justify away in my own eyes, but if you don't accept it, I have to stop it, right? I have to change it. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Don't even have fellowship with these things. Saints of God are supposed to be saint, meaning sanctified. What does that mean? Meaning separated. Oh, I thought you're supposed to be Christian. You're supposed to love everyone. Yeah, we love everyone, but you ain't got to come to my house and kick it. We ain't going to have no Facebook dialogue all day, text message dialogue all day, phone call dialogue all day. That fellowship means no fellowship, right? This is being a saint of God. If you're living contrary to his word and you're not really repenting, you're still in this cycle. Month after month, week after week, right? Still going, still going, still going. Yeah, that's what happens. It's a breaking of the fellowship. And then what are we supposed to do? Have no fellowship with them and reprove them. Don't have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, right? For it is a shame, verse 12, to even speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Glory to God. But all, all things are heard, verse 13, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Right? For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So, drop down to verse 15 even. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Don't be a fool in your own eyes justifying your abomination sacrifice. Don't be a fool in your own eyes saying, well, I'll get married when I think it's right. Me and my, me and my lady are still going to get together. We've been together for six years. We have children together. I hear the Bible teaching, right? But we still going to do it in our own time. Don't be wise in your own eyes, right? right. You got you got to you got to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Right. If you ain't feeling to do that, you're going to get beat with more stripes thinking you're Christian and you're saved and you ain't walking in his way. Right. You're going to get beaten with more stripes, Jesus says. Right. I'm going to end right here. Matthew 9, 21. 
you have to determine within your own self that you're going to do it. You're going to break the cycle of sin and you're going to break the cycle of rebellion. You're going to break the cycle of not wanting to give your all to Jesus. Right. You may come and hear sound Bible teaching from 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 the ministry here, or even on this page. And glory to God for that. I praise God that he revealed his mind unto us in my life, in my household. And he's with us. Right. But you have to make up your own mind within your own self that you're going to do it. I'm going to make the change. I'm going to put away the people. I'm going to put away even the clothes. I'm going to put away the foolish rebellion of this. I'm going to put away, right, men acting effeminate. Oh, you got to put it away. Not even playing around with it. Oh, I just act on, yeah, that's a jesting spirit. That's a demon. You better quit acting like that. God going to judge you for that. Oh, no, he ain't going to judge me for this. You're in rebellion, right? But you got to make up within your mind, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do this. I'm going to break the cycle. I'm going to stop making all these foolish conversations. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to make, I'm making up my mind and God will be there to help. But see, this is where we get the example we were speaking of a while ago. Matthew 9, 21, with the woman with the issue of blood. For she said within herself, right there, that's an example that she, so Jesus didn't walk by and say, woman, if you press through all these people, you come touch the hem of my garment, you will be healed. That's like the false preachers out there if you just so if you just come in the house of god if you meet me in phoenix at the at the big coliseum where we have our gathering and all that you're gonna get blessed you're gonna get your breakthrough you're gonna get your increase you know i'm gonna give you a bottle of water from nigeria and all these things uh no right god god says even in this example right here you have to see within your own self that you're gonna press through whatever it is the spiritual wickedness through your own veil of your own flesh that you're gonna press and, and feel him you're gonna press and feel him and that you're going to do it no matter what it feels like. And when you press and you make up your own mind, for she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. That faith is what God is looking for in each and every one of us. That, do you really believe what I say and who I am, who I am? Okay, well, these things that you, have, you are going through, I can deliver you through. Seek me. Press through the oppression. Break through that cycle. Get it off of you and press through the affliction of whatever it is, right? Press through people coming against you in your own household to serve me the way that I say. Press through and watch me bring through a healing and deliverance that, that only I can do, right? But again, this word comes back to you have to say within your own self, right? These words are easy to speak, right? Messages are even easy to put together. The Lord gives it, you know, for it to speak on. But when this thing comes to each and every one of us, it gets real, Right, So let this word be sealed in our hearts that in our minds that we have to make up our own mind and God is going to meet us right there in that, in that place, right? Again, the topic of the beginning of this word today was you got to break the cycle. You got to break the cycle. Um, I'm going to end, I guess, with this one real quick. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't even planning on going there, but here we go. First, or Second Peter chapter 2, 1 through 2. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you. Many of these are there nowadays, right? And shall bring in uh, damnable heresies, meaning you're going to hell if you want to believe this, 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 this teaching that they're telling you. It's a heresy. It's false, right? It's contrary to God's word and his way. Even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction, right? And many shall follow their pernicious ways by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of, right? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. But 1 Peter 4, 1 says this, For as much as then Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. That's breaking the cycle. Your flesh is going to feel some type of affliction when you break the cycle finally. Whatever it is, right? I've been listing all these things, but whatever it is, whatever someone may be struggling with when they hear this word, you're going to feel an affliction in your flesh. You ain't going to feel the glory and speaking in tongues and going off into the third heaven. Make up your mind. That's going to happen. You're going to feel nails. You're going to go through it. Yep. But God is right there and he'll meet you, right? He'll meet you to endure and bear that cross. Amen. I praise God for the word today. I thank God for holiness. I thank God for the theme of last week of seek ye for the old past, right? And stand and walk therein. Jeremiah 6, 16, 
right, that this is the way of holiness, the mind of God that the saints of God have to abide in. Amen. It's not a popular message, but we give God glory because not everyone's going into heaven. Many people are going to hell and they think that they're actually making it into heaven, but we got to prove ourselves that we're going to make it in, right? We got to prove unto God. Amen. Amen. So I praise God for everyone in the house today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Praise God for everyone online. Amen. That, um, that this word be an instruction, a blessing, correction, edification, everything that the word of God does. Amen. Uh, that God be glorified in your life. When you make up your own mind, I'm doing this, right? I'm doing this for God. I'm not doing this for myself. I'm doing it for God, right? And God be glorified in that, in that mind that's made up. That's what Jesus left the example. I'm doing this, right? I'm going to do it. And he endured it all the way till the end. Amen. And that cycle will break. Oh, that cycle, it has nothing else to do except to break and to flee. God says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he shall flee. Your cycle doing this, saying you rebuke the devil, the devil's laughing at you. You still doing this? I rebuke you, devil. You still doing this? I He's laughing. He's like, <laughs> you ain't wanting to suffer. You don't want me to go. That's why you're still hanging out with me. Yep, you still doing all this? I rebuke you, devil. He's like, yeah, all right, well, I got you. You keep playing miracle round until the day of judgment and see that I got you. God forbid. That's why the message came today that you got to break the cycle. You got to do it. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil, and then he will flee. That cycle will snap off, right? Addiction will be a thing of the past. Uh, 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 having a, a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, you make this mind up and abide in his word, you will have not a form of godliness, you will have godliness as he says. Amen. amen. And for me and my household, amen, this is how we will serve the Lord, amen, by the grace of God. Amen. Salute everyone online, any leader that would be on, amen. We praise God for your labor, amen. And for everyone in the church, every brother and sister, amen, I pray that the word was edification. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me, amen, directly um, to go over anything that was said on today, amen, and that God be glorified in your life, that you would have a heart to serve him in the way that he says. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Glory to God. <laughs> Love you, son.